So this is one of our four uh, trial plots we have on the farm, experimental areas. Uh, we're looking at soil regeneration is the general term. Specifically, it's high biomass rotation and its impacts on weed burden, crop quality and soil quality. So we have three plots here. So this is the control plot, which is split in half. There's a negative control here, which is cultivated for five years. And at the far end, we have grass, which is grass for five years. So that's the same on all the four fields where these plots are. So then we can compare between the fields. Then beside, there are two experimental plots, which is where we have the two uh, treatments. We have an enhanced treatment and a standard treatment. So the enhanced treatment is generally what we do on this farm, which is we try and produce, grow as much biomass as we can in situ, so on site, uh, and feed it back to the soil. So the diverse lay mixture uh, in, in the enhanced plot uh, isn't removed. It's, it's fed, uh, topped off and fed back to the soil, so giving the soil more food. In the standard plot, is what you might get on a, um, a normal organic farm where you're mowing for hay or silage and removing the, um, the fodder to feed to animals. Um, we're not putting back the manure because it, 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 it's complicated from a uh, experimental point of view in terms of recording how much manure we're putting back, so we're not, we're not doing that. Um, the other thing we're, we're doing from a biomass point of view is returning all the straw, uh, all the, the crop byproducts are returned to the um, enhanced plots. On the standard plots, they're all removed, as they might be for, be removed to, for bedding or sold as mushroom compost or something like that. So again, the standard plot all the biomass is removed. On the enhanced plot, all the biomass is returned to the soil, except the what we're harvesting for sale. So we're doing that for five years and we're rotating the, the, um, the enhanced and standard plots as we do on the whole farm. And uh, in each of the four fields where these plots exist, uh, they're all at different stages of the rotation. So it's uh, technically known as a space for time uh, experiment. So where we can't um, do each, each uh, rotation for the whole length. You pick different points in the rotation and in different parts of the field. So we've got all the rotation going on, but at different parts of, uh, different parts of the farm. So we have the replicates here. Here's one uh, set of three blocks here. There's another set to my right. There's a three meter margin in the middle. So three more blocks there, and then three on the right-hand side. So there's three replicates in each field. Three plots with three replicates. And uh, so we're about halfway through. Uh, we're starting to see some differences, uh, which is very exciting already. Um, and hopefully towards the end of the rota uh, rotation, end of the experiment, we're, we're, we're really hoping to, to see some differences between the plots. Uh, we've taken core samples soil core samples when we started uh, and they're in deep freezes so that when we come to the end we can analyze those and compare them with uh, the, the samples uh, um, so they're analyzed side by side effectively. Um, we're looking at uh, the y yields as we go along but really it's all about what happens in at the end of the experiment in five years time and looking at the comparison between the, between the plots then. Well, we're, we're looking at yield um, measurements, we're looking at general soil analysis, uh, we're looking at specific ones, which uh, things like water infiltration rates. So we've done water infiltration rates when we started. Um, we, we're looking at uh, penetrometer readings, so we used a penetrometer to go around uh, all the plots when we started as well. Uh, we did bulk, uh, soil bulk density analysis for all the fields. Um, and we've, as I say, we have the cores which we're going to come back to and look at um, 
in a few more years. Uh, one of the analyses we're looking at is uh, respiration rates of the soil, which is quite a complicated and expensive um, uh, analysis to do, but we're hoping to get some funding for that. So um, that will be very interesting if we can get that. Weed burden, yeah, that's just a case of uh, counting weeds in the different plots. So that's something that we've been doing and we'll, we'll continue to do. Uh, crop quality, we'll look at the crop quality uh, as we proceed. Uh, and yields, an obvious thing to look at. Uh, we're recording forage yields where we're taking the amount of forage, we're recording how much we're taking away um, and how much, um, how much we're feeding back to the soil as well. So both of those. I still think the best example uh, or the best technique for seeing whether the soil has improved is, is by observation and, and what is called active perception. And I can see if you look at those two plots over there, a difference in colour between the enhanced plot and the standard plot. If you look carefully, you can yeah. just see a difference. And it's not just the way it was topped because it was, it was in the autumn, so the plants had a chance to recover from that. So I can see a difference in the, in the, in the uh, colour of the two plots. And, and as the plants grow, um, you know, healthy plants, certainly if you've got a bad patch in a field, they stand out, healthy plants from sick plants. And, and it's the best observational way for, from seeing if a f soil is healthy. But to put that into an experimental context where you want to pick out fine details, that's not such a um, precise way of, of observing the sort of differences we're looking for. So um, it's a difficult one, but we're working on it. <laughs>